Welcome to NFL Imperialism 1990 style. Here I have a map of every NFL team in 1990 representing the area that they are located. I'll spin a wheel that will randomly select one of the teams and then an arrow that will point which way they're going to attack. If the arrow lands on a state with another team, those two teams are going to have to play each other and the winner is going to take all of the loser's land along with one player of their choice. But if the arrow points to a state without a team, they're going to take the land and then then I'm going to spin a wheel of positions. Whichever position it lands on will get a two overall boost to the highest rated player at that position to their team, similar to Bengals video. And we're going to do this until there's only one team left standing. Again, I want to give a shout out to Dean's World for coming up with this concept. He just released his third NFL imperialism video, which I highly recommend you guys check out. So without further ado, 1990 NFL imperialism begins now. So who's going to be the first team? up. Looks like it's going to be the Cleveland Browns. The Browns were a little bit better back in the day, although they weren't great in 1990. Already starting off with kind of a tough decision here, but I think that's going to clip the top of the Steelers land, so we're going to get a classic rivalry. It took the Steelers forever to get selected in my first NFL imperialism video, but it looks like they're coming out with a strong start today. It looks like it's going to be too late for Bernie Kosar and the Browns. He's going to throw that one to the end zone, and we've got our first penalty. That looks like Pat interference. The penalty is not going to matter as the Steelers are up by three possessions. The Browns do make it a little closer though. So the Steelers clearly not looking to have a slow start like they did last time. And now was not the best time for me to find out that apparently the way these rosters are made, some of these teams such as the Steelers and the Browns are $700 million below the cap. There is absolutely no way that I can fix that. So for those teams, instead of just moving the player, I have to take a player on that team and edit him to be the player that I want to move. In this case, Ozzie Newsome from the Browns to the Steelers. That's a pain in the butt that I was not expecting to have to deal with in this video. And next up are my Green Bay Packers. They got eliminated very early in my Madden 09 imperialism video. And just like last time, they're traveling to play Detroit. At first, I thought Barry Sanders and the Lions might be too much for the Packers to handle, but they really pulled away in the second half here. And it looks like they're going to walk away with this victory. So a rematch from the first episode of NFL imperialism but a different outcome this time. The Packers aren't passing up on Barry Sanders this time. The best running back of all time now plays for the green and gold. Already seen some success from teams who struggled in the last video. Next up are going to be the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to be an interesting team. This was just before their dynasty in the 90s. And going from their logo there, we're going to have the Battle of Texas. Of course, the other team in Texas at that time was the Houston Oilers, now known as the Tennessee Titans. And in my opinion, they have the best uniforms in NFL history. Here's Warren Moon with a strike over the middle, and that's going to be the nail in the coffin there, as they're just going to bleed out the rest of this clock. Just a couple years too early for the Cowboys, they did have, you know, the big three, Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, and Michael Irvin, but it wasn't enough to get it done against Houston. And we see another star running back on the move, this time Emmitt Smith with the Oilers. Three teams out, we're down to 25. There were only 28 teams back in the day, and are we already going to be seeing the Packers again? I guess they're feeling really confident now that they have Barry Sanders on the squad. And now they look to take down another divisional rival in the Minnesota Vikings. Maybe Green Bay shouldn't have been so confident as the Vikings beat them by three scores. That's one strategy you can use there being super aggressive, but it really backfired on the Packers there. And just like that, Barry Sanders is on the move again, and this might be one of the greatest running back duos in NFL history. All battles so far, we have not seen any taking of land yet. Let's see what the Indianapolis Colts do. Colts weren't really a great team back in the day, so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. And the way the arrow's pointing there, they're headed out west to play the Chicago Bears. And this just looks like a classic Bears game. A whole lot of defense, not a lot of offense or points. Now down by 14, Jim Harbaugh is going to be sacked. If the Bears can get into the end zone here, they may have a chance, but it's 4th and 15. Harbaugh under some pressure. He's going to dump that one off. No chance there. The Colts lock up this win. And to reward them for that win, we're going to be giving them Richard Dent. So now the Colts are going to have Indiana and Illinois. So again, another battle. These teams are starting off very aggressive today. 
Next up, that is the LA Raiders. That's right, the Raiders played in Los Angeles back in the day, and now they're going to be grabbing the state that they're currently in, Nevada. And for the first time, we're going to be spinning this other wheel. Who's going to get upgraded for Los Angeles? It lands on defensive end, and currently Howie Long is a 91 overall. And now here he is after his upgrades. So that's our first upgraded player of the video now. Back to the wheel, and that's going to be the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's see what they try to do here with Randall Cunningham and company. That pointed them up northwest here, and that's going to send them to Buffalo. This was the start of the Bills going to the Super Bowl for four consecutive years and losing them all. But they showed no mercy to Philly today, taking this one 42 to 13. And I can't really think of a scarier duo than Bruce Smith and Reggie White. And now the Bills have half of Pennsylvania here. So it feels like we've already seen a little bit of everything right now, and it looks like the Buffalo Bills are up again. If you watched my last video, you'd know the Denver Broncos were dominant, and that might be what the Bills become. There's nothing up that way for them to take, so we're just going to respin this, and directly east from them are the New England Patriots. We're going to get a divisional battle. And this result checks out. The Patriots were the worst team in 1990. They only won a single game, and they played like it today. What a monster performance by Thurman Thomas. And with that, the Buffalo Bills have another win under their belt. And there wasn't much to add from the Patriots, but they did have 92 overall Andre Tippett. And here's a quick updated look at the map. Back to our old friend, The Wheel. What does he have in store for us next? It's the Indianapolis Colts again. They already have a nice win against the Bears. Where are they going to be going this time? The arrow points them northeast and going from the logo, that's going to put them against Cincinnati. And we've got a snowy one here in Cincinnati. Third down and goal. The Colts trying to get into the end zone. They're going to be denied. Bengals use their first timeout. After a Colts field goal, Boomer Esiason needs to lead a 14-point comeback here in the next minute and 14 seconds. It's third down now for Cincinnati. Esiason launches that one deep, and it's going to be incomplete. I really thought McGee hauled that one in. Instead, it's fourth down. Can the former MVP convert it here? Fourth and eight. He's in the gun. Takes the snap. Esiason launches that one over the middle, and it's going to be dropped. So first, the Colts expand out west, and now they're going to be headed east as they take over half of Ohio. And we're going to give Indianapolis one of the best left tackles of all time in Anthony Munoz. I wonder if the Colts are becoming an early favorite now to take it all. They've already made some nice moves. And again, we're going to see the Pittsburgh Steelers making up for the lack of action they got last time. And that arrow points them straight east, which is going to put them against the Buffalo Bills. And this looks like a showdown between two of the AFC's best Buffalo trailing by one right now. Just under a minute left to go. Buffalo trying to get Scott Norwood into field goal range, but here's Thurman Thomas picking up the first down. This should be field goal range for them, although we know the 1990 Buffalo Bills weren't the best when it came to kicking in the clutch, and now Thurman Thomas is going backwards. Steelers defense looking to hold here. Here's Thurman Thomas on the carry, and he's going backwards again. Pittsburgh all out of timeouts, and they need the stop here. It's going to be third and 14. They're going to hand this one off to Thomas, and this time he picks up positive yardage. Buffalo runs it down to 10 seconds. This is going to be almost a 50-yard attempt for Scott Norwood. Snap good, hold good, kick is up, and it's through. Buffalo takes the late lead. Final play of the game. Neil O'Donnell is in shotgun. He's going to take the snap here, drops back to throw under some pressure, letting this one fly deep, incomplete, but hold up. There's a flag on the play. It's going to be pass interference on the defense. The Steelers are going to get one shot at a Hail Mary. Neil O'Donnell now from midfield is going to have a shot to win this for the game. Triple zero is on the clock. He drops back, lets this one fly. That's going to be incomplete. No flags. The Bills hold on. So after that win, that's going to connect Buffalo to Indianapolis, which could mean we have a big game in the future coming up. And Buffalo is going to get a huge boost in their secondary now with Rod Woodson. The Bills could be a favorite to win this. They already had a very strong roster going into it. And is that going to be them again? Wow. The Bills feel like the Broncos of last video. Hopefully it doesn't end the same for them. And that arrow is just going to give them Vermont. But remember, that does mean they get to upgrade one player. Which position will it be at? It's going to be Jim Kelly. He was a 92 before, and now he's going to be a 94 overall. So quickly, we go back to the wheel here as Buffalo slowly gets more and more overpowered. And now we're going to see the Kansas City Chiefs. And yes, I actually did put them in Missouri this time because the Rams were in LA back in 1990. And we're going to see some more land claim now as they just take Arkansas. And who will the Chiefs get upgraded on their team? It looks like it's going to be their middle linebacker. 
So that's going to move up Hackett from a 78 overall to an 80. So back-to-back -back turns where teams are playing it a little bit safer now as is that going to be the Falcons or the Houston Oilers? They already beat the Dallas Cowboys. Where are they going to be going next? Nothing south of their logo, so we're going to re-spin that one, and it keeps putting them south. Come on, wheel. Put them literally anywhere else. There we go. So that's going to give them Oklahoma. And so that we don't confuse them with the Chiefs now that there's going to be a lot of red in the south, we're going to make them that beautiful baby blue. Now, which position are the Oilers going to be upgrading? Looks like it's going to be at defensive end. And that's going to boost Sean Jones from an 87 to an 89. A lot of teams just boosting their players right now, not getting super aggressive. And now we're going to have the LA Rams. Of course, the Rams at the time having to share the city with the Raiders. And that's who they're going to be attacking with this turn. The battle for LA has been a defensive one and the Rams are looking for a stop here on third down. He's going to hand this one off to Bo Jackson. First down. That should be your ball game. The Rams are all out of timeouts, so the Raiders are just going to come out here in victory formation and run out the rest of this clock. That was a close one. The Rams had their chances there, but they were forced to settle for three field goals. And the Raiders are going to sure up their offensive line with Jackie Slater. So the Raiders not looking too shabby right now after getting that victory. Is this going to be the Seahawks next? No, it's going to be the Chiefs again. We saw them expand down into Arkansas not too long ago. And now we're going to see them expand down into Tennessee. It looks like the Chiefs want to upgrade their roster before they get into any attacks here. And they're going to be upgrading their top corner, which is Albert Lewis, who's up to a 94. I think the Chiefs are playing this right. They don't have a super overpowered roster, so might as well get some firing power before you get into some fights. And up next are the Houston Oilers. Which way will they be going? Well, hopefully the Chiefs are ready for battle because Houston's coming to town. And maybe the Chiefs' strategy is working out here. They got a 10-point lead over the Oilers with about a minute left to go in the game. Here's Warren Mood trying to lead a late comeback. It's third down and 16. He launches that one downfield, nearly picked off. So here we go. It's going to be fourth down and 16 for Houston. A last ditch effort. Moon's pass is going to be caught. They're going to convert it, but they need to hurry up. They need to score and they need to score now. Quick throw from Moon up top. It's going to be intercepted. That's going to be your ball game. And for the Houston Oilers, disappointment like this is nothing new for them. And the Chiefs strategy might be paying off as they now have the most land by far. And while Emmett Smith would be a nice addition for this Chiefs team, they already have the Nigerian nightmare in the backfield. So we're going to give them a big Big upgrade over Steve DeBerg with Warren Moon. So all of a sudden, Kansas City's looking real nice right now. And for the first time, we're going to get the Denver Broncos. They were dominant in my Madden 09 video. How will they do with John Elway? That arrow points them down south, so they're going to take New Mexico. And who's going to be getting an upgrade for this Broncos squad? Looks like it's going to go to their offensive line, which was kind of needed because their best tackle was only an 81 overall. He's up to an 83 now. And that's going to bring us back to the wheel. Who's going to be next? It looks like it's going to be the LA Raiders again. They won a defensive battle against the Rams last time we saw them. And from their logo following the arrow, that gets them actually past the Niners and they take Oregon. But San Francisco is incredibly good this season. Joe Montana was the MVP, so we can't sleep on him at all. So now who on the Raiders is going to get themselves an upgrade? Looks like it's going to go to their inside linebacker. It's not a huge upgrade, but their middle linebacker is going to go up from a 76 to a 78. So the Raiders may be using the same strategy that their division rival Kansas City Chiefs are using. And for the first time, we're going to get the New York Giants. In real life in 1990, they won the whole thing against the Buffalo Bills. And we're going to get a rematch of that Super Bowl with this matchup. And it looks like we've got a good one here in Western New York as the Giants try to hold the Bills although they are in field goal range and that would give them a two score lead this is a huge third down for new york handoff to thomas he's got it and the bills are going to run out the rest of this clock so after winning it all in Madden 09, the Giants are now eliminated. And good luck scoring on Buffalo's defense now with the addition of, in my opinion, the greatest defender to ever play the game. Buffalo is really starting to look like the favorite to take this one all, especially with that defense that they've got. And now we've got the San Diego Chargers. Which way will they go? Going with another respin here as the arrow just wants to point them south. Finally, it points them in a direction where they can play a team and they're going to be playing the Raiders. And this is just a wacky game. We got snow coming 
coming down from the sky here in Southern California, a color on color matchup, and it's not even very different. It's dark blue versus black, but the Chargers do get the stop on Bo Jackson there to lead the third down. San Diego needs the stop here, otherwise the Raiders are going to get the victory, and they get Bo Jackson before he gets to the sticks. But LA keeps the offense on the field. Fourth down and one. If they get this, the game is over. Dropping back to pass, dumped off. It's going to be caught. The Raiders hold on. So after that huge win, the Raiders now have most of California. And for that victory, we're going to be giving Los Angeles a junior say out, make them say out, in the middle of their linebacking core. Still, a lot of teams we have yet to see, including the defending Super Bowl champions. Instead, we're going to get the Chiefs yet again. Do they go to just improve their team by grabbing some land here? Indeed they do, as the Chiefs grab Kansas. Which position do they go to upgrade this time? That's going to land on outside linebacker. Derek Thomas. Thomas was already at 99 overall, but there's always room for some improvement, so I went in and boosted a handful of his stats. So the Chiefs really just sticking with their strategy there, just attacking some land and then going and growing a little bit more, and now we're going to see the Colts again. Haven't heard from them in a minute, which way are they going to be going? And looking at that arrow, they just missed out on playing Buffalo and grab West Virginia. And which player is Indianapolis going to upgrade now on their roster? Looks like it's going to be their free safety, which isn't a huge upgrade, Mike Park was only a 73 overall, but I guess every little bit helps. A lot of teams in the South we still haven't heard from yet. Will we get one here? How about a repeat customer in the Buffalo Bills? And if I was a gambling man, I'd be putting money on Buffalo right now. Nothing up north for them to take, so we're going to respin this wheel again. And that eventually points them down to this tip of Maryland, which belongs to the Redskins. Both these teams were really good back in the day. Of course, Buffalo going to Fort Stray Super Bowls. And one of the teams that beat them was the Washington Redskins in 1991. And they might lose to them here. Buffalo doesn't really seem to be in a big hurry despite being down by 10 and only having two timeouts. Jim Kelly's going to dump this one off into the flat for Thomas who gets stopped immediately. 36 seconds left to go. Kelly in the gun. Thomas to his left. He's dropping back to the throw. He's got time. Firing that one deep. It's going to be caught and out of bounds. That stops the clock for them but Buffalo needs big plays now. Under 30 seconds left to go. He's going to dump this one off and it's going to be shy of the sticks and tackled in bounds. 20 seconds left to go. Buffalo all out of timeouts. Kelly's going to throw that one over the middle. It's going to be caught but shy of the end zone. Tackled in bounds. The clock continues to tick down and that's gonna be it for this one feels like it's the real first big upset that we've seen so far today I really thought Buffalo could go all the way but the Redskins handled them here I really thought Buffalo would win it all with that defense but when you give up 27 points like that maybe your defense isn't as good as advertised and just like that Lawrence Taylor is on the move again man I really thought Buffalo was gonna go all the way but I guess that's what happens when you continue to get selected now the Saints are a team that haven't been selected yet but they're also not great. And now they've got to play the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, I can't say I'm surprised by this outcome. The Saints were never really good until Drew Brees got into town, but they do make a nice play here. It's not really going to matter though, as they're all out of timeouts, and the Chiefs can pretty much just run down the rest of this clock. So the Chiefs are going to expand their land as they continue to get better. And now the Chiefs add on to their already great linebacking core. A lot of red left on this wheel, and are we going to get one of those teams? No, we're going to get the Minnesota Vikings. I think we've only seen them the one one time today when they beat the Packers, and now they're going to improve their team by grabbing South Dakota. Who's going to be upgraded now on this Viking squad? Looks like it's going to go to the offensive line, and we're going to improve their center from a 74 to a 76. Still a lot of teams that we have yet to hear from today, and are we really going to get the Vikings back-to-back -back times? Maybe they'll go out and grab North Dakota just to improve their team even more. Or Iowa, that works too. Again, looking to see who's going to be improved on this Viking squad, and now it's going to be their strong safety. And Browner is now up to an 87 overall. Will the wheel select the Vikings for a third straight time? No, it's going to be the Atlanta Falcons. First time we've heard from the Dirty Birds today, and they're going to be going down south. And that's going to put them against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First time we've seen either one of these teams, and it's going to be the last for one of them. Vinny Testaverde trying to lead a game-winning drive here. He's going to dump that one off for a short gain. They hurry up to the line of scrimmage here for third down and six, under a minute 20 left to go. Testaverde's got time in the pocket firing that one downfield incomplete big play here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and this dirty bird defense Tampa Bay needs this one to stay alive Testaverde over the middle it's gonna be caught down at the 10 under a minute left to go now Testaverde in the gun he's gonna take the snap looking to throw for
for this one yet again. Steps up into the pocket to the end zone, broken up by primetime. It's third and goal from the nine. Tampa Bay looking for the game-winning touchdown over the middle. Caught, but he's going to be marked down at the one. It all comes down to this. Fourth and goal from the one. Can Tampa Bay get in? Testaverde wants to throw for it. It's going to be out of the back of the end zone. The Falcons hold. Well, they do have to make sure that they don't give up a safety on this play. It wouldn't be a game winner, but it would give the ball back to Tampa Bay. Sending his fullback in motion. He's going to hand this one off, and they get some breathing room. The Falcons win. Oh, oh my gosh, it's going to be intercepted. What are the Falcons doing? What in the world just happened? What's the penalty? Holding on the Falcons. What in the world? I was not prepared to commentate at all. I thought this game was over. Why are they throwing the ball there? Oh my gosh. Goodness, Atlanta choking all the way back in 1990 just like that. The only turnover of the game comes on the final play. I can't believe it. Atlanta Falcons, what happened? You just lost to the creamsicle Tampa Bay Buccaneers on a pick six on the final play of the game when you didn't need to be throwing it. I still don't understand what they were trying to do there. Instead, Tampa Bay holds on for the win as we take a quick look at what the map looks like right now. I'm still in shock at what just happened there, but now the Buccaneers are going to get prime time on their squad. We've gotten some crazy matchups in this video. Are we going to get any more? How about the Minnesota Vikings again? They've won one game and then they just went out and started grabbing land and that's what they're going to keep Keep doing as they claim Wyoming. Looks like they're using the same strategy that Kansas City is doing as they're going to improve a defensive end. So that's going to improve Chris Dolman to a 95 overall. And who's going to be up next? All the red teams have now clumped together on the wheel and we're going to see one of them again. It's the Chiefs. They've been playing this very strategically so far and now we get to see which one of these teams is better. It's going to be the Chiefs at the Vikings. This has been a pretty good game so far but the Chiefs are starting to pull away late. They got a 10 point lead but the Vikings will be getting the football back. Does the young Rich Gannon have a comeback in him? They need to score 10 points in the next about minute 20. He's going to throw that one downfield. It's going to be caught, but he's going to be tackled in bounds. Second down in 28 now for Minnesota after a sack and a holding penalty. Gannon is going to be taken down again. Third and 35 on their own 29 yard line and they need to score 10 points. I don't think Minnesota is going to win this one, especially after that pick. Kansas City with a massive win there and they by far have the most land on the map. I mean, look at all this land they've got from border to border. Once again, Barry Sanders is on the move, making an incredible one-two punch with him and Christian Okoye. The Chiefs are looking mighty dangerous right now. Is anyone going to be a threat to them? How about the Denver Broncos? They're up next. They've got a good shot at playing Kansas City with this turn, or they can just completely avoid them by taking Nebraska. All Denver's done is improve their team by going down to New Mexico and now Nebraska. And now Bobby Humphrey is going to be an 80 overall for them. Still a few teams that we have yet to see C and is are we gonna get one of them now yes we will with the 49ers i've been waiting to see this team this is a very overpowered squad and we're gonna see just how good they are now against the raiders we could be on the cusp of an upset right now here's bo jackson on a carry to the left side he's not gonna pick up the first down on third down san francisco's all out of timeouts though this to make it a five point game kick is up and good which means that joe montana has just over 30 seconds to get them into the end zone he's gonna let that one fly there it's gonna be caught and I think he got taken out of bounds under 20 seconds now Montana over the middle he's got Jerry Rice down at the 34 yard line but they need to hurry this up and I don't think they're gonna do it four seconds three seconds the clock continues to take down it's gonna be triple zeros and the Raiders pull off a massive upset man I thought the 49ers had a good chance to win it all but apparently not as they can't even beat the Raiders who now have a good chunk of the West Coast and Joe Montana down to just 10 teams remaining now after the 49ers elimination and we're gonna see the Chiefs again they looked pretty good against the Vikings in their last game and this arrow eventually gets them down to New Mexico which means they're gonna be playing the Broncos and we've got a classic matchup here between these two AFC West opponents it's third down handoff goes to Barry Sanders and he's gonna be very close to the sticks right there they don't give it to him and the Chiefs send out the field goal unit here to make it a six-point game we all know about the drive that John Elway orchestrated against the Browns can he do something similar here against the 
Chiefs. They're going to start this one on their own 18-yard line. Elway takes the snap, moving around in the pocket, firing that one downfield, and it's going to be caught by Shannon Sharp. Out to midfield now, it's third down. Going five wide, Elway over the middle. He's got Sharp again down to the 30. But this clock continues to tick. They hurry up to the line of scrimmage, officially marked down at the 29-yard line. Quick throw from Elway. He's got Sharp again down to the 13. And Denver uses their final timeout. 20 seconds left to go. Elway's going to dump that one off. What are you doing? The clock is continuing to run. Oh my gosh, you'd think Nathaniel Hackett was the head coach of these 1990 Broncos. The way that clock was used at the very end there, what are you doing? You have a chance, and then you just let it run. Oh my gosh, the Chiefs get away with one here. And Kansas City just continues to grow now as they pretty much have all of middle America. And with that win, the Chiefs now have Steve Atwater. Denver's little run comes to an end there, and now we're going to be seeing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm not sure how good they are, though. I feel like they just got really lucky against the Falcons. And now they're going to be playing Dan Marino and the Dolphins. And we've got a good one here in South Florida as the Bucs currently hold on to a three-point lead, but the Dolphins are looking to change that. They hurry up to the line of scrimmage, a minute 10 left to play. Marino's got time in the pocket, firing to the end zone, and that's going to be caught for six. Tampa Bay's got 57 seconds to get this one into the end zone. They also have all three timeouts. Testaverde's got all day to throw. He's going to dump this one off into the flat for a minimal gain. Here's a third down and five. Testaverde looking for the conversion, and he's got it. 20 seconds left on the clock now with no timeouts left. Testaverde launching this one deep and incomplete. Here we go. It's fourth and eight. Game on the line. Testaverde letting this one fly. It's going to be knocked away. The Dolphins hold on. The Dolphins here very wisely just kneeling it down at the end of the game. And they're going to take all of Florida along with Georgia. And believe it or not, Deion Sanders was the only player on the Bucks who was even over an 80 overall. And here's an updated look at the map after that game. We still have yet to see the Jets, Cardinals, and Seahawks Will we get one of them here? I think so. The Jets are up for the first time today. Which way are they going? South, which just means they're going to be grabbing Delaware. And improving one member of their team. It's going to be a defensive end. And while we still haven't seen the Jets in action yet, Daryl Davis does get a boost to his overall. So that makes it two teams that we have not seen yet. And oh, how about the Jets again? Really making up for the fact that we haven't seen them pretty much all video long. And now they're going to try to take them the Giant Killers in the Washington Redskins. And we've got a close one here in the nation's capital. The Jets currently up by seven, but this pass down the middle is going to get the Redskins a little bit closer. Under 40 seconds left to play as this clock continues to tick. Ripian looking to throw under pressure. He's going to be sacked. It's either Ripian or Ripian, I think, for their quarterback. I didn't look it up beforehand, so I'm kind of just guessing right now. Under 30 seconds left to play. He's going to take the snap. Pass over the middle is going to be caught. That's going to be a first down, makes a man miss, and they use their second timeout. 21 seconds remain. Pass over the middle is going to be caught. He's going to take it upfield, though, not get out of bounds. Are they going to use their final timeout? They do. I feel like we've been robbed of some clutch endings at the end of some of these games just because of how dumb the CPU is. We'll see if we'll get one here. Pass to the end zone. That's going to be a Redskins touchdown. The extra point's going to tie it up. The Jets here are going to start off overtime, and it's going to be a play fake from Ken O'Brien. He's launching that one deep, and it's going to be caught at the 50. Here's O'Brien dropping back, looking for another deep shot. He's got his tight end across the 30 down to the 25. Second and 13 after a false start penalty, it's going to be another play fake. O'Brien going for the win! incomplete, but there's a flag down for pass interference. All the Jets need is one yard to win the game. O'Brien wants to throw for it, and instead he's going to be sacked. Here's a third and goal from the seven. O'Brien's going to dump that one off into the flat. It's going to be shy of the end zone, and we've got a flag down holding on the offense. So the Jets will send out the field goal unit here to give them the lead in overtime. If the Redskins can get into the end zone on this drive, they're going to win the game. But right here, they're going to be going backwards. Here's a second down and long now for Washington. Looking to set up the screen. Instead, he's going to be sacked again. Third and a mile now after back-to-back -back sacks. Ripian's looking to throw. He's got time in the pocket in his own end zone. Dumping that one off, and he's going to be tackled immediately. Fourth and 22. Game on the line. Jets send the heat, and it's going to be 
intercepted. This one is over. The Jets add a pick six at the very end. Not quite. But regardless, that still ends the game. So the Jets go from having half of New Jersey and Delaware to all of this now. Once again, Lawrence Taylor is on the move because when you have a chance to get the GOAT, you go grab him. Only seven teams left now on the wheel and we're going to get the LA Raiders again. I didn't really think much of them at the beginning, but then they went out and beat the 49ers. And north of them are the Seattle Seahawks who we're going to be seeing for the first time today. Another AFC West battle is shaping up to be a good one here and the Seahawks are going to pick up a first down. That might put this one on ice. In fact, it should, but it looks like Seattle might throw on this play. We'll see. We've seen some dangerous passes late in games throughout the video and that was another dangerous throw there. All Seattle really needs to do is a couple of quarterback kneels, which it looks like they finally do. And after a massive upset over the 49ers, the Raiders go down. The Seahawks are in control of the entire West Coast. And now they get a huge boost at quarterback. Still one team that we haven't seen yet until now. Where will the Phoenix Cardinals go? They're headed out east to play the Kansas City Chiefs. And this one is a lot closer than I expected it to be. I honestly thought the Cardinals were going to get whooped in this game. Instead, they have a chance in the fourth. Phoenix goes hurry up here. They're going to launch this one deep over the middle. It's going to be caught. That's going to get them in the Chiefs territory. 10 seconds left. Phoenix is at the 46-yard line, all out of timeouts. Looking for the Hail Mary on third down. That's going to be intercepted. The Chiefs hang on. That game was a lot closer than I expected it to be, but it doesn't really matter because the Chiefs hang on for the win. The best player the Cardinals had to offer was Tim McDonald. And look at all of this land they got. Kansas City just keeps expanding. It could really go to any one of these teams right now. I don't think any of these would be extremely shocked and the Seattle Seahawks are going to be up. And that's the first time the wheels even landed on them today. Here they claim Idaho. And who do they get to upgrade on their team? Looks like it's going to be wide receiver. I think so. Which improves Brian Blades to an 81. So maybe the Seahawks now gearing up for battle, getting ready for one of these teams. Next up are going to be the Dolphins. They looked all right in their game with the Buccaneers earlier, and now they're going to grab Alabama. Maybe using the same strategy as the Seahawks trying to boost up their team before taking on one of these great ones. And that gets their middle linebacker up to an 89. Will we see any attacks here or just more teams improving? Next up are the Jets. They got what I would consider to be a little bit of an upset against the Redskins earlier, and they're going to do the same thing as the Seahawks and the Dolphins claiming some land. Virginia is all theirs now, but who will they get to upgrade? Mark Boyer is going to get improved up to a 73 overall now. Not a huge upgrade for the Jets there, but it's better than nothing, and it looks like they're up again. Maybe they'll get aggressive and attack the Colts with this turn. Instead, they're just going to end up claiming North Carolina. Again, the Jets just looking to improve their roster before they take on one of these big teams. Is this going to be another upgrade to the tight end? No, the running back. So now Blair Thomas is up to a 75. Again, it's nothing crazy, but I guess it is better than nothing. Are we going to see the Jets for a third straight time? Maybe they'll go out, grab some more land and improve their team even more. That arrow points them directly west, meaning we're going to see a Super Bowl 3 rematch. I wasn't expecting either of these teams to still be in it this late, yet here we are. And with the Jets up by 11 with 30 seconds left to go, it looks like they should win this one. And they do, which means they take all the Colts land and they are now heavily connected with Kansas City. And the addition of Eric Dickerson could get the Jets to go all the way. Here's an updated look at the map now. And we've only got four teams left remaining. And now up are the Miami Dolphins. There isn't a ton that they can do just based off of where their logo is. So after several respins, we finally have them going into South Carolina. Now who's going to get the upgrade on the fins? Looks like it's going to go to their defensive line. And they kind of needed it. Jeff Cross was only a 76. Now he's up to a 78. Spinning the wheel once again. Who's it going to land on this time? It's going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. Out of all the teams left, they are by far the most centered, which means they can really do anything. And they're going to be attacking the the New York Jets. And Kansas City is out here showing no mercy. They got out to a quick start and they never looked back. So now the Chiefs have Lawrence Taylor to give them one of the greatest linebacking rooms of all time. So down go the gang green. And that just leaves three teams left. Will these teams get aggressive and attack now or will they get ready for a big game? All the Dolphins really can do is attack the Chiefs unless they get a very specific pointing arrow. They don't, so they're going to be traveling to Kansas City. And this might just be the best game we've seen in the entire series. Knotted up at 27 apiece with a minute left to go in the fourth. And the Dolphins defense is going to get the stop. So we're going to be all knotted up at 27 going into overtime. And one overtime was apparently not enough because after nearly half an hour and eight combined drives, the Chiefs were finally able to get into field range to kick the game winner in double OT. 
Man, I thought that game was never going to end. And going into their championship game now, the Chiefs have added Deion Sanders. All the wheel will decide is who gets home field advantage. Whoever it lands on has to travel. So the Seahawks have to go to Kansas City. Well, unfortunately, the championship game is a little bit underwhelming. No one really expected the Seahawks to get here. Meanwhile, the Chiefs have been building a super team. And unlike last time, we don't see a big upset here at the end. Turns out not even Joe Montana can bring these Seahawks to be champions here. But what a crazy... Crazy run here by these Chiefs. They went out and grabbed Warren Moon, Barry Sanders. I mean, they were a very overpowered team and they deserve to be champions. I mean, look at this insane roster they've got put together. They have 499 overall players in Deion Sanders, Barry Sanders, Lawrence Taylor, and Derek Thomas. Of course, Warren Moon was a huge upgrade at cornerback. They had Albert Lewis at cornerback, Ricky Jackson at linebacker to make up that beastly linebacking core. They had Steve Atwater. I mean, it's no question why the Chiefs won it all. So with that, we're going to wipe away this old sad Seahawks logo and replace it with the Kansas City Chiefs. They are champions of the second NFL imperialism here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching the entire video. If you're new here, subscribing and leaving a like, it's always appreciated. And let me know down in the comment section what other twists you may want to see in future videos like this. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And until next time, this has been Jeffrey.